One question already popping up here live from David. He says, somebody without technical background who is new to the ISO role, what resources would you have them read to get them up to speed within six months? This is a really good question. And first off, I want to just put the context on this, okay? Because here's the thing. I'm just going to be completely honest with you, okay? Most of the time, organizations are not going to want to hire you as an ISO if you have no experience, right? I'm not saying that there's no possibility that you can get a job doing security compliance of some sort, but nine times out of 10, the first thing they're looking for is experience, right? I just want to get that out of the way so that you don't think that this is some kind of entry level position that you can just jump in, you know, and doing this stuff rather. But where, but to answer the question, and if anybody else, any of you other experts out there who are watching me, who have been in this field for a while, please feel free to chime in and give your two cents. And I will, I will read your comment out there. Because sometimes, usually somebody who watches me has way more information than me or has a really good insight into this. But the question is, for those just joining, for someone without a technical background that is new to the ISO role, the information system security role, what resources would you have them read to look into to get them up to speed within the next six months? That is the question. Now, let's put this in context. Okay, somebody without a technical background who wants to get into the ISO role. Now, I know many people who do not have a really strong technical background who are ISOs. So I'm not saying that you can't be one, but usually they're looking for some kind of experience dealing with in this space, right? They want, because you're dealing with a lot of, of money. You're dealing with systems that cost millions of dollars, right? So they're not going to try to hire someone who doesn't know what they're doing. That's what I'm saying. You can get in this without a strong technical background, but they're going to expect you to have some level of experience, right? Now that's out of the way. Let's talk about his question. Where can you go to actually read this, to actually jump into this? Let me show you one resource I just recently learned. Somebody who asked a question I'll, I'll cover in this course here. Let me show you one really good resource here. I'm just kind of prepping my screens here. So just bear with me and let me show you one good resource I just recently found. Okay. Shout out to the Marine who gave me this. This is really great information. So this right here, what you're looking at is something called a certified information system security officer. I, I had not heard about this until somebody asked me a question about it. I will be going into this a little bit further today, but I just wanted to point out what this is all about and why this one it might be somewhere you might want to go if you didn't have technical background on this. So this is from a provider called Mile2. Now I've done some of their courses before. They have a certified ethical hacker course way back in the day that I took with Mile2. It's, it was pretty good. What they did was they hired a person who was an industry insider who had done it before to major corporations and he'd been a certified ethical hacker and that guy taught the class so they have excellent teachers they're hiring people who've done this before and and then they'll do a very in-depth class on it so if you're thinking about doing this and it's not cheap now <laughs> it's not cheap as you'll see in a second but this is one resource is one of many resources i'm going to point you to that i would recommend so this is certifications typically are they want you to already have experience and you take the test to prove that you have experience but that said i have used certifications to actually learn a new trade like you can use the learning objectives to go through this and learn it familiarity with whatever thing that you're learning is really good for learning the common body of knowledge in any given subject. OK, so certifications are really good for that. And this one right here, as I was looking at it, somebody kind of compared my course to this and it's not a comparison. Mine's different, which I'll explain to you later. But what's good about this course is it is actually walking you through some of the technical things that you should know as an ISO. Right. Normally, right off the box, when you actually get one of these roles as an information system security officer, they're wanting you to know a little bit about all this stuff. You're not expected to be a subject matter expert in any one of these things. Right. So that's the thing. Let me just give you an example. Like you want to be an ISO. And you don't really know much about network connections. You never done network engineering, a network administrator or anything like that. You don't have to be, to be honest with you, because typically as an ISO, you're going to reach back to your SME 
your subject matter expert who is a, who, who has a CCNP or a CCNA and who's been doing this for you know five, six, ten, ten years, whatever. And you're going to ask them about, hey, I've got this network connection. I've got this other network connection. I'm having some issues here. See, the thing is, you have to know the basics of networking in order to even articulate and talk to a person who has that subject, who is a subject matter expert on this. Otherwise, they won't even know what the hell you're talking about. So this right here, this course, something like this, not necessarily this one from mile two, but something like this is a really good guide in the right direction to get your technical skills up. Right now, if you happen to be already be on the help desk for three, four years or whatever, well, congratulations, because you already know a lot of this stuff. If you happen to have already been network engineer for a couple years or whatever, congratulations, you'll know most a lot of this stuff. If you happen to have been in a SOC environment as a cybersecurity analyst for some years, you know a lot of this stuff. But as David asked, like, what if I don't have the technical background for this, but I want to get into this ISO role and there's a possibility for me to get in it because maybe I've, I was a manager in a SOC or something like that, but now I want to be an ISO, right? This right here is walking you through some of the main things you need to know as an ISO to be able to explain or even understand what kind of vulnerabilities you're dealing with. And I'll just touch on a couple of these. Now, the first two are modules that they have here are given. You got risk management, security management. So these things are talking about the NIST 837, which is a risk management framework, which walks you through the entire cycle, life cycle of a system that you're going to get uh, credited or you're going to secure, right? So this is the stuff that I go deep into and I can talk for hours about these just these two alone but then they're going into something like um identification on authentication what is that so that means like your login like whenever you have a username and password what's the length of the password is it 14 characters long are you using uppers and lower case are you using numbers are you using special characters are you using multi-factor authentication it's stuff like that right so you don't have to be a subject matter expert on that particular thing However, you do need to know what it is, right? You do need to have some idea of what it is. And then access control. That's talking about how does the organization manage who has access to your system? So this not only touches on the logical access management, but in some cases, the personnel access management, and then also maybe even physical access, how access to those systems. So you're talking about overall access to those systems. And so this is another item that I would, you know, that, that they're going to touch on that you're going to know by the end of this course. So this is not bad, but here's the bad news. This is a five day course and it's, it is $3,000, right? Per person. I believe that's what they're saying here. And this is self-studied course retails for $1,500. So if you were to take their online self-paced course, you're talking about, about a mortgage payment right here, right? So yeah, it's not cheap, but other sources you can use, you can do is probably things like the NIST documentation. You can read up on NIST documentation on how this all works. Some of the NIST documents will be stuff like what you're seeing on my screen here, which is the NIST 818, which walks you to the security plans. Like what does a security plan consist of? What kinds of things do they want to see in this document that you have to either edit or write or review as an information system security officer? Other things would be a NIST 837, which is the risk management framework. And another one would be the NIST 853, which was a breakdown of all of the controls that you have to do as an information system security officer for the organization security posture. Those are just a few documents, but if you go to NIST 800, you'll see a whole hundreds of different documents that you can read through, but the main ones would be the NIST 837, the NIST 853, and then the FIPS 140. Those would be the main ones that I would, FIPS 120 would be another one. So those three right there would be the ones that I would focus on the most. So I hope that answers your question. And David also says, thank you for bringing that certification up. I forgot about the mile two. I researched them a few years back. Yeah, I've had some run-ins with them before. I could tell you some crazy stories about them that I won't go into on this live. <laughs> but I actually did go to their course. Their course was awesome.